Welcome to Ford Ram and Goal. Football may be over, but there's still a shitload to talk about. So grab a glass, put the game on mute, and take a listen. Let's do this. Welcome to Ford Ram and Goal. I'm your host, Kurt, and I've got my co-host, Dick, here. Say, what's up, Dick? What's up, Drammers? Thank you for listening and doing exactly what we are doing right now. We have some games on TV. We have some whiskey in front of us. We're going to talk shit. We're going to talk everything that's relevant in the world of sports today. We want you to do the same. We want you to do it with us. We want you to agree with us. We want you to talk shit with us. Uh, so, yeah, turn it up. Enjoy. We love it when you do it with us. Absolutely. So as I said in the intro, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got football topic like trades and things going on on the market. We've got semi-football related like a fight in a bathroom and some little kid just talking mad shit to Cam Newton. And then we've got other things non-football related. We're going to talk a little about Draymond Green. We're going to talk about a little bit of college basketball as that's what I'm watching right now. So we've got some good stuff. Amen to that. Football Hangover Episode 1. Uh, but we also got a lot going on with the social media. So, Dick, lay that on them. For sure. So, Drammers, as we always do, want to hit you with a couple of administrative things. A um, couple of things to remember here. We've got the website, fourthramandgoal.com. We've also got the Instagram and Twitter at fourthdram. That's 4-T-H-D-R-A-M. Um, Kurt and I have been rocking the Instagram pretty hard lately, and I think Kurt's going to double down on the Twitter. So, expect to see some awesome quips and bullshit laid out there. And as always, if you want to kick it old school with us on Facebook, we've got Fourth Dram and Goal. Join us there. Join the party. Um, the more people we get involved, the more uh, fun it will be. And as always, um, don't be afraid to tell your friends about us. Um, we're always looking for new followers, looking for new feedback. Um, and they can always catch us and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Audible, CastBox, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you stream music or listen to a podcast, we're on there. And we're always looking for feedback. If you have some thoughts, have some insights, or just want to tell us that we suck, don't be afraid to send us an email, fourthdramandgold at gmail.com. But don't be surprised when we reply to you, because we may even ask you to come to the show and to Kurt's point, just talk shit with us. It's what we like to do. So, Kurt, I'll kick it to you first, man. What you got in your glass tonight? All right. Thanks, Dick. I have got something special in my glass, and it's special because it was a gift from Dick. From the biggest Dick. I agree to disagree. Um, I've been holding on to this one, and I know in recently we've talked about sharing the same bottle and so forth, but this one was just too good to, you know, you weren't going to get your hands on this one again, and I really wanted to dive in and try it. So I have got what you sent me, the sample of Chattanooga whiskey. It's a single barrel Specs store pick. All right? It's 119 proof. Uh, I've done... Chattanooga whiskey cast strength before super delicious really surprising bottle so that's why I'm really surprised uh, really excited to dive into this one and see how they compare and see the other great things that this uh, distillery is doing as I've talked about Chattanooga whiskey before it is it was MB, MGP juice now it's not MGP juice now it's their own stuff getting real popular you're seeing it on plenty of sites um, but yeah that's what I've got in my glass on my TV, I've got a heck of a Big 12 basketball game. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State are going into the half, 37-36. It's like there's not an easy game in that conference on any day. Uh, but just wanted to throw that out. Dick, what is in your glass? Yeah, Kurt, so I've got a little uh, smoke wagon, uncut, unfiltered, straight bourbon whiskey. This is uh, batch number 37. As you were talking, I literally just threw it up on our Instagram. So a little bit of uh, episode 22, 22 recording on there. Got a nice little shadow shot of you on the uh, on the computer. So um, good shit, man. Um, this is this is actually a kind of a cool bottle to me because I we originally started drinking Smoke Wagon. We had some feelings, some thoughts about it, and I started following Smoke Wagon on their Instagram. And that dude is just awesome and i remember him doing a i think it was an instagram live talking about batch 37 he's like a little sweeter it's a little more fruity and you know, a lot of vanilla notes and i said you know what i'm gonna get batch 37 i'm gonna i'm gonna find it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna do it and you know what lo and behold i did get it i did do it and man I, i've already drank probably about a third of this bottle so far i'll review it tonight on the show it's pretty legit dude 
it's pretty legit. Um, I think slowly, if you haven't already figured it out, um, I'm becoming more of a smoke wagon fan. I'm even becoming kind of a Colorado whiskey fan. Um, kind of outside of Kurt's profile, but I love it. I love it. So I'm excited, man. I think we've taken a realistic approach to smoke wagon. I think one that they would appreciate. You know, if you go back and you heard our earlier reviews, we, they weren't spectacular, but we left you with like their growing distillery. They're going to come out with more products. We're interested to see. We just didn't do this sucks moving on, which it didn't just suck. It didn't. Um, but it also so grows on your palate, too. Yeah, I like the, I like the approach that we've had with, with Smoke Wagon. And, uh, you know, definitely not just because he's they've actually liked a couple of our photos, which is cool. Shout out to just yeah. You know, you put you can put shout out to two ninety one. They've actually shared a couple of our gram pictures on their store. So yeah, definitely shout out to uh, Smoke Wagon. Um, we love following them on Instagram. Highly recommend it. If you're not already following them, follow them. Pick up their product and then uh, you know hashtag two ninety one family. They've liked and uh, reshared a couple of our uh, photos. We really like following both of those teams. Um, another little fun fact, man. So. I got my hands on, I put it up on the gram, the E.H. Taylor single barrel. I saw that. Oh my good lord, it is good. You're going to get a couple couple of those. Um, at the same time, I was talking to my specs dude, and I actually got my hand on the silver dollar vodka from Smoke Wagon. And I like vodka. My wife drinks vodka. 80 proof. Dude, I could sip on that stuff straight all day. It is it is clean. It's American vodka. It specifically says on the label. Um, it's not vodka. Not vodka. Yeah. From Rascovia. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bert Bert Kreischer is not uh, not representing this one. Ah, um, okay, gotcha. Yeah. If you so, haven't heard our Bert Kreischer story. You've got to listen to that. That's on a previous episode. I'm not going to tell you which one because you got to learn to listen to all of them then. But it's there and it's awesome. It, it was a good night. Um, all right, so we'll kind of move on from this. We talked about a couple of the headlines that we want to cover, and let's get into uh, the second dram, man. Um, what headlines we got? I know you teased us a little bit. You just gave us a tip. Give us the whole thing. So, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got the Cam Newton video. We've got the OU bar fight video. We've got a you know a CEO of a baseball team resigning. I, I, I want to talk about Draymond Green. Uh, we I've got to keep it logo local and throw out Texas Tech news because they're on TV and they had a big transfer today that we'll get into. But yeah, we're just going to kind of shoot the shit. There's just so much news out there, uh, even with football over. Like we said, we're going to keep it rolling uh, and bring you what we've got, drink some good stuff, and, and, and let you give us back what you think we've got to say on everything. So let's start with it. Do it was it. all over the internet <laughs> yesterday. Man, and he was he was repping the Peloton gear too. <laughs> yeah, it was a kid at one of Cam Newton's camps. Seven on seven represent. Now I saw two videos, and you may be able to put the timeline together for me. But I think there was one video they showed, pretty vulgar. That one wasn't on ESPN, <laughs> and it was the kid saying like, "Your ass, your ass, your ass." No, that's not the one I saw. Okay, so I saw this one, like your trash, this and that. And like Cam's keeping it together, like, and he was does he? the let. Was he? Hold on. <laughs> like, let me talk to your dad. Uh, and that one was pretty intense. The one ESPN showed, it looked like the aftermath, and I could be wrong. It looked like the aftermath where Cam comes up to him because he's telling the coach we squashed that. So I'm, I'm assuming that he's referring to the first video. Uh, we squashed that. And he's trying to talk to the kid. He's trying to have a conversation with him. And you could just kind of tell the kid's not having it. Wasn't he saying, um, like, you're not you're broke or something like that? What was he saying to him? He just kept saying it over and over. He was insulting. Just over yeah. and over and over. And then Cam, um, Cam kept saying, I'm rich. I'm rich. Yeah. Which, obviously, he is. So, the kid's, gonna ha the kid's got a long way to go before he can get to that level. But then, of course, on all the, you know... Coaching social media is it's like 
don't raise your kids to be like this. Don't teach them to talk like this. This is so disrespectful. What's your take on that? Do you I mean, agree? I, I, yes and no, right? So the kid was definitely in the wrong. He even came out and issued a formal apology on Instagram. Um, that got torn up. There was people like commenting on the kid's grammar on that. Well, okay, like let's be honest. Like the kid is in high school. He's of a generation where Instagram and social media grammar is not the number one priority. He's also a football player. I mean, we, football players have stereotypes, and they're not always wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, he still did the right thing. Like he said, I was wrong. My bad. I shouldn't have said what I said. My parents praised me better than that. Um, you know, this doesn't define me as a person. I hope that, you know, I'm going to keep my hustle on, keep going, and grow from this, right? So the kid is, what, 16, 17 years old. He's 16 or 17 years old. He's a dumb teenager. You and I knew each other when we were that age, and we did dumb shit all the time. Here's I never where, knocked the shit out of a referee on a football field. Well, that was, that was another part <laughs> Sorry, of San Antonio. Um, <laughs> the other thing here is Cam Newton's a grown-ass man. I mean, he's our age, right? Grown-ass man. Why is he arguing with a 16-year-old? Like, he's the one coming back at him. He should have just been like, meh, whatever, peace out, and walked off. Like, does he think that he's being bigger than him by keep going back? I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Like, okay. You've now engaged an adolescent in a yelling match of no context. No, there's no substance here. You're just acting like a child. And I think that's what it comes down to. Cam Newton lowered his maturity level down to that of a 15 or 16 year old. So who's in the wrong here? Cam Newton. Okay, I'm glad you went where you went. There was there was part of me that I'm going to agree with Dick here, and there's another part where I, I don't necessarily agree with you. That's okay. You expected me to dick it up, and I did. Yes, you did, you did, you did good there. The kid, if you didn't see the first video, he's going at Cam pretty hardcore. I don't know what Cam said to him before to set that off. I'm assuming it had to do because Cam had his team. The kid played for another team. It had to do with some kind of shit talking, which is going to happen in football. Sure. All right. Let's let's not talk about the age difference right now. That's a big. There's going to be shit talking in football, and if you've been to those seven on seven tournaments, which that's you have, all it is. <laughs> that's all it is, because the teams it's backyard are close football to and each shit other. Talking. Yes, the teams are close to each other on the sideline. Well, and you, you usually know, know the people on the other sideline too. Right, so that happens at those events, okay? More so than a regular game where you're clear across the field, you've got the coaches on the sideline. These 7-on-7 seven seven are like kids and maybe one or two coach, and yeah, it's different. There's a lot of shit talking at them. Now, let's talk about the fact that one was a grown man. I don't necessarily think, so maybe he said, I'm rich, I'm rich. That is more of like putting the kid in his place. That's what he's trying to do. Kind of saying, you got a while to go there, buddy. And then I kind of respect what he was trying to do. Like, let me talk to your dad. That's kind of, I think that's his way of saying, I'm not going to engage with you. Let me talk to your dad and let's get, like, I respect him more than I'm disagreeing with him for getting into the altercation. Now, if I hear that Cam Newton started this by saying, hey, fuck you, kid. Like, okay. <laughs> like we then all yes. probably wanted to do once or twice. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, that's a problem. I agree with you on the 16 and 17-year-old thing. If a kid who, like, there was a very small number of people that were defending the kid who pushed the ref down in South Texas, saying he's 17, blah, blah, blah. That was extreme. The kid was then bigger yeah, than I the ref. See, I could see forgiving this kid. And then, yes, don't chastise his apology for grammar like I'm, I'm gonna say he's a kid he's apologizing he he probably definitely knows he messed up probably got a lot of shit about it there's probably gonna be the friends that say hey you talk shit to Cam Newton good for you but that's probably a small group of people oh that's probably so, yes oh, that's probably most of his friends let's be honest <laughs> okay yeah well, not all adults could no, 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 across no. the country apparently <laughs> But yes, this is this. I'm glad you took it to where this isn't as simple as wrong or right. There's a lot of things to talk about here in that one little incident. Now, with that incident, <laughs> the bathroom fight with the OU wide receiver. All right, let's take a step back here, though. I want to want to want to let's set the stage. This is not something that happened a year ago. 
and just surface now. This is something that happened last week. In a bathroom, at a bar, nobody wearing a mask in the middle of a COVID outbreak, right? I just want to like set the stage there. So well, it's already irresponsible behavior, but what do you expect at a bar? It's a college bar. It's Norman, Oklahoma, right? Okay, as a kid who spent many nights in Lubbock, Texas, things happen when there's not so much to do other than drink. Just and, trying you know, to spread the COVID. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom in these small town bars, dude, you keep your head down, you go do your business, and you get the fuck out. All right, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, I love the video because these are two monsters. Look, it's two small guys. I guess two <laughs> small guys. And then the funny thing is, now I saw a 58 second clip. I don't know if there was one more than that. The one you sent me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the part where the kid's wiping his nose and he looks over at his tag team world <laughs> championship wrestling partner. It's hard to pick up the, like, the audio, but it looks like he's saying, you ready to do this? Like, are you sure you want to do this? And then they just go roadhouse <laughs> it on was those roadhouse. guys. And you even see like the oh shit on people's faces. The dude recording was and, like, oh shit, it's going down. I'm going to get to him in just a second. But that was the highlight. The the confirmation of two buddies looking at each other like, man, we're going to, you ready to do, like, let's do it. Like, to have the confidence and the ability to do that, you know you're a badass. Also know that you have your true friends at that point. <laughs> yes. And nobody's probably going to mess with them for a while. They might get offered an MMA contract out of that. But, and I like the bigger friend oh i don't know was he a, i don't know was he a player too the big i don't guy know the, the guy him? in the uh, jean jacket no i don't know yes but he was a big bitch well, he too give, <laughs> he gives a pretty good sh- shove and he instantly regretted that because Dude, while the he got main fight's going on <laughs> you see the other guy going to town did you just and, see? Uh, I, I feel bad, but like I feel bad. The dudes, like those stalls are all full. So there's like four dudes just with their junk in their hands, pissing while this fight breaks out behind them. And the uh, main guy gets uh, gets him on the ground. And then the dude you're talking about, he starts shoving the big the big uh, jean jacket guy into the guys who are pissing. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever been in that position see, where you're like, I don't want to touch yes, the stall with my dick, I, but now I I, 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 I mean, <laughs> yes, like I said. Small town bathrooms like Lubbock, Texas, Norman, Oklahoma. That's going to happen. And they just kept peeing. So you walk <laughs> in, you do your business. If that breaks out, you walk out. <laughs> and there's always the annoying guy that's willing to record the fight. <laughs> and that's what happened. And it's it just impresses me with these recording skills that these guys remain calm, do the commentary, and they're getting some, you know, they're doing the 360 view, walking around it and everything. Props to him. Well, but hashtag he was world typical, star, man. <laughs> exactly. He was, your, he was your typical annoying recording guy. Uh, he's like, oh, shit, these guys are serious. <laughs> but think about all the dudes that have been doing this for so long. That was not the first time he... T- videotaped his friends doing some stupid shit. That was not the first time that those guys have kicked ass. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> so, I, I've got to look at I think Pat McAfee apparently reacted to it, so I'm, I'd love to jump on there and see how he reacts to that, because I could only imagine what he has to say, but, yeah, you know, I mean, what, I mean, that's, I mean, I went and visited you in College Station a couple times, and there was, I mean, I'm sure that happens at a place like that, too. You've got your rough and rowdy oh, yeah. Yeah, Dixie Cowboy Chicken bars, all day. Lot, exactly, Dixie Chicken, the same place that allegedly you you saw what was it, Johnny Johnny Manziel who had his O lineman circling him while he took shots at the bar. Is that a confirmation that I can get on that? Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> <laughs> Thanks. Speaking of college steak station confirmations, this bumped in my head the other day, and I didn't text you because I got distracted by life. What is the? So let me give the listeners a little background. Cane's chicken. It's delicious. You could eat their sauce like a soup. You took me to Cane's chicken in College Station. But right next to it is a Lane's chicken. Yep. Same concept. You can order the chicken strips or the chicken strips and they have a secret sauce. And I was trying to Don't explain the that toast. to... 
The Texas Toast, yes. I was trying to explain that to somebody, but I didn't want to do the fake news wrong and tell them the wrong story. So I need confirmation on it. What is the backstory? Because it's literally, if you don't know this, there is a college station, Texas, where A&M is. There is Kane's Chicken, which if you don't know that, delicious chicken franchise. And right, it's literally right next door. So you got Lanes and Canes. Lanes is a kind of like an old white, old white block building. Um, Canes is actually a relatively decent sized chain. I want to say they have a dozen stores. There's two or three here in San Antonio. There's one in oh, Dallas. It's a lot more than a dozen. Well, okay, but you know what I'm saying. Like they, they have a franchise. There was a there's a running rumor in College Station, and I, I've never been able to confirm or deny this from is any it a sort of tradition? reporting. It, yeah, let's just say it's it's very um, conservative news. Let's make it a tradition. Well, it's it's a long-standing tradition or story that the Canes and Lanes, that they were two brothers who essentially opened up together and one broke off and created his own. Um, it was Canes and he created his own, um, you know, restaurant franchise but ultimately the sauce is very very similar the chicken is almost to the t similar there is a preference everybody has a preference but where i'm of the school that you go through the lanes drive through and get the chicken and then you go back through the canes drive through and you get the sauce and that's your best combination of the two experiences but lanes is a is a college station born and bred um steady tradition so funny what you can find on google Mm-hmm. I googled Canes and Lane's story, and there it is. Mike Lane opened the first Lane store in College Station, Homo, Texas A&M Aggies, in 1994. And they have expanded, blah, 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 blah. Todd Graves opened the first Canes in Baton Rouge in 1996. And it says, on the other hand... Blah, 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 blah. People see Raising Cane's as a direct ripoff. Then the Lane's mom and pop store. So that's a little backstory. A little backstory. All right. Well, that that's now I, I don't but know. But Lane's why I was the original. You. So there you go. There you go. Uh, I must crown Lane's as the winner in this competition for their crispy chicken fingers, crunchy fries, and alternative sauce choices. Do you agree, Dick? This is important. Oh, it's Lane's chicken all day, like I said. And then you go back through the other drive through at Cannes to get their sauces better. Mm. And it may have something know. to do That's that it has more... Fighting words. It has more Cajun influence. I don't know. Well, well while we're shooting the shit, we may as well talk about this now. Um, we're in Texas. So, <laughs> if you didn't know or you didn't hear, we had a little power outage down here. Um, oh, you said shooting the shit. I heard shit show. Yeah, let's talk about the shit show. Ah, very similar. Uh, just for the sake of it, you mm-hmm. know, being from Texas, it wasn't that bad for both of us. Hashtag uh, Urcot. You... <laughs> hashtag Urcot. Uh, hashtag the worst thing to happen to me since uh, Closet Gate at Texas Tech <laughs> with Mike Leach. Um, you might want to clarify which closet. No, no, on a serious note, things were not that bad for me and Dick. I had... You know, a little power outage for maybe a day, nothing serious, well-prepared. Dick, you had, what did you have? So mine was a little bit worse. Um, uh, I had some frozen pipes on uh, Tuesday morning, but I was able to get the uh, hair dryers out there and kind of free up the ice within the pipes. So we had hot water, running water the entire time. Um, We lost power Tuesday through, and we had it off and on, and we got it back Thursday night. So there was a night where I had to pile the entire family or two nights in a row, I piled the entire family into the living room. Um, the first night I was waking up every hour and a half to restoke the fire and literally throwing logs on the fireplace to keep us warm. So it wasn't the greatest situation. Um, but uh, all in all, I think we both probably were very lucky. Um, but yeah. And I was on a boil water notice for a little while. Did you finally get off of that? Yes, I did. So basically, our main point is prayers to the rest of the state. Anybody who suffered from this, anybody who, you know, there's people that don't have a place to live tonight. There was horrible carbon monoxide stories just showing the struggle and the the risks that people were taking to stay warm. So being Texas boys representing two very big metropolitan areas in the state, we've got to send our prayers. We've got to say we love you. We've got to say we're going to stay Texas strong. I mean, that's what we do. 
Hashtag fuck, um, fuck Ted Cruz. Okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, we, so, so edge on. Uh, we can say it. I'm sorry. So we want, um, to, we want to talk about fun videos, fun stories. I got another one through at you. Did you see the GoFundMe that funded a mariachi band to go out in front of Ted Cruz's house and play music? I cannot confirm that that happened, but I can confirm. Oh, after I saw the video. Watching the local Houston news, there was there was in fact a mariachi band in front of his house. Yeah, I saw I saw the video and I found the uh, the Twitter feed. Yeah, um, pretty fucking funny. Hit Reddit pretty hard. It was pretty funny. Um, that entire Reddit. Ted Cruz situation, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Independent, whatever it may be, you've got to at least admit that if you're here Bad in Texas, you're a timing. Texas leader. Why? Why? At the least. Oh, no, yeah. I'm saying that at the least, bad you've timing. got a bad timing. Bad timing, yeah. Bad timing. I mean, in the whole that yeah. is his wife's local mom groom group doxed him and or doxed her and essentially ratted out and blew up his story. And then he tried to, like, give away water as part of a, oh, I'm, I'm still here for you, Texas, after he was in Mexico and should have been on a seven-day quarantine as mandated by federal travel standards. There's a lot of bad, just bad timing. Bad timing is a good way to put it, Kirk. Yeah, but there was, you know, there was a lot of people that stood up, you know, sticking in the sports world. James Harden donated a shitload, even though he's not here anymore. Uh, J.J. You know, Watt? J.J. Watt. I mean, even though the sports world is screwed up in Houston, the community star power, I'll say, mm-hmm. is never in question. They do awesome things. And and those are always cool to see. Mattress fucking Mac. Double down Stood again, man. Up <laughs> I told again. you again. You remember when I, I talked about the Hurricane Harvey thing? And I talked. Yes, about, we've you, talked did, about. Him. Did you see Joel Osteen's doors open up? He did. Joel showed up and, and opened his doors this time. I sent you that as soon as it came up because I know you're a Joel Osteen critic. But um, neither here nor there because I want to focus on the man that. They, like, when shit got crazy, he was there on the news with his granddaughter saying, come to my store. I'm getting a Mattress Mac statue. Like <laughs> He's a Houston legend. Like I said, Icon. He is. And I watched the little Vice documentary on him. It's awesome. Check it out. I mean, like I said, people stepped up. No matter what you think, no matter, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are going to say this was Texas's own fault, of course. But there was, regardless... People stepped up, and they're awesome stories. So that's our Texas rant to go on for a little while. And let's take a break. We won't give our grade, but we got to talk some whiskey. Why don't you give me your nose there, Dick? What you got on that smoke wagon? I get vanilla. I mean, this is me just raw nosing it. A lot like raw dog, and you just get in there. There's a little dill. Like I lo- I'm starting to love that sweet dill that you call out. Faint oakiness. Little cinnamon spice, F- faint floral notes, but a lot of vanilla, a lot of dill. It's a lot of sweetness, man. It's not your traditional oaky bourbon cinnamon bomb. It's there's no peanuts. A lot of fucking vanilla. It's it smells good, and I think this is where it goes to opening up our our nose palates as well as our mouth palates to different flavors. You know, the Texas bourbons. I'm starting to get more into, like, the, the Western whiskeys. Because 291's not technically a bourbon. Yeah, I've noticed that. You're on your kind of... I love High West, man. I love High West. I love Smoke You're Wagon. You're on your uh, Manifest Destiny in life. Ooh. Going westward with your whiskey choices. I can't afford California, so I just won't get there. Maybe I'll get into wine. Uh, I like Texas wine, though. Um, Yeah, so that's what I'm getting so far. Okay, well, hold hold your grade. Let's we got more sports to talk about. I'm trying to hold, please. I th- I have noticed drinking more wine, as manly as that sounds, it comes out, and it helps when you're tasting whiskey for sure. Because then you're picking grapes. Exactly. You're talking dry wine. You're comparing to Merlots. So that I will say that. Don't hate on the wine. We've talked about this before. No, I love I love a good cab. I love a good Merlot. Hell, I like I like a good Prosecco. I know, I know what you're going to say, but Prosecco is good. Hey, I'm not judging. I love a good Lambrusco when Ooh. I'm at the dinner table. A and Pinot drinking, Grigio? You know. Oh, yeah. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Um, so, okay. Hold no, no, it's, it's Dick, not Wee oui, Wee. Oui. 
Ah, got you. Great, great joke, dick. Um, Hold off on that grade. So, yeah, I had high hopes for this Chattanooga, and the nose is not disappointing at all. It's 119, so I knew I was going to have some deep oak. Deep oak. I've got a cherry bomb going on. And then I actually got a big whiff of maple syrup. Now, a lot of these are going to sound repetitive for many of the other ones I've had, but this is just what I'm getting. I can't make it up. Cherry and maple are the two dominant um, two dominant scents that I'm really getting. Mm. So far, so good with this. What do you have on your... Uh, what do you have on your TV there, Dick? You watching any sports? Oh, yeah. I'm watching the uh, Cowboys Tech game. Um, I did want to double back just on the notes that I wrote back. And this was back on, like, January 13th, right? So this is a good month and a half ago. <clears throat> but it is that exact same bottle that Kurt is, Dick, is, uh, that Kurt is drinking right now. And it's hilarious the, what, you, what you called out, man, because I never get the cola. And I wrote down cola on this. Maple syrup, brown sugar, cinnamon, and banana. Boom. So we had maple syrup. We had cola. Cherry. I, cherry. I, I get the cherry sometimes with the banana mixed up with each other. It was more nanner for me. I, I want to call it like 1920-ish. Hold on. Let me blow your mind here. Cherry cola. Ooh. You're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> So that's funny you got that. I'm gonna leave my notes out for for when you review it later. There you go. So even though we don't have the same bottle, we've become nerds. Even though Dick has a much better note taking ability than I do, because um, I basically wing it sometimes. But uh, we can still compare. So I'll save my grade as we got more things. We gotta talk about real. I want to hear. Well, let's talk about Drake. Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's. Uh, the Mariner CEO resigns. We won't get super into that. He said some fucked up comments. Probably best he did resign, especially in today's environment. It was probably the appropriate choice. Um, yeah, went to a Rotary Club. Just basically just, talk shit about everyone's can just, English speaking abilities. Can, can we just not be, for lack of a better term, dicks? Like, if you're a multimillionaire, just stop talking. Just just stop talking. Go home. Fuck your wife. Snort your coke. Drive your Lamborghini and go on with life. All right. Well, it's a PSA. Uh, that was a PSA. Lays it on him, and it, it, he had been with the organization for a while. I think he had been there since like '96. I know, so dude, like, did he like, did he draft Ken Griffey? I don't know, but I don't know. I don't want to get into it. I, I, fuck him at that point. All right, let's go on. Chime in on our Gmail. Let us know what you thought about it. Um, baseball season's not here yet, so we're gonna get rolling on that. I want to talk about Draymond Green. Draymond Green was in the the news a couple times this last week. Uh, the po- first post, one, the, post the last time we talked about him. Yeah, of course. So Draymond just continuing to be Draymond. Uh, Draymond it's a polarizing group has grown on me. I know. I don't get it. but <laughs> Draymond has grown on me. I used to despise him. I used to hate him. But I appreciate him. I'm still hip to some of the And he's one of those guys him. that... You can you can okay, but if Draymond Green right now had a chance to go to your team, would you take him? No, he costs too much and he's too fucking old. You're full of shit. No, um, I'm not. Anyway. I don't want him to be a spur. He's not a spur. Hmm. Well, I don't think he wants to be a spur either. Well, but good. anyway, fuck him. <laughs> so Draymond Green, Draymond Green. This is a this is a Draymond Green appreciation speech, okay? Yeah, fuck him. That's <laughs> Draymond Green went on a tangent. Is that the right word, tangent? Yes. When he talks too dictionary. much. Yep. Uh, dictionary. See what I did there. Um, he went on this spiel because he's sitting there. They're playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, and on the other bench is Andre Drummond. And it was one of those things where the Cavaliers want to trade Andre Drummond. So they don't want to play him. Because, of course, he gets hurt, knocks down his trade value. So Draymond Green comes on after and says, like, basically that it's bullshit that when a player wants to be traded, 
they're chastised and if they don't show you know a good personality about it and keep doing their job then they're the worst thing in the world and he used James Harden as a reference and then he says basically but when a franchise wants to trade a player and if they want to sit him and keep him from playing the game that that's okay so he calls the double standard thing out I don't always agree with what Draymond Green says and we've already gone a little political that was funny political I'll say that it was, you know, I mean, what? it wasn't political. It was Texas centric, and we're allowed to have a fucking opinion as citizens. Exactly. This is gonna, but I don't. It's tippy toeing it, but it's still sports related. I don't like when people open up about athletes just playing. They should keep things. Just you know, give the interview, get going, because I was out there, and I've never agreed with that. And I'll tell you why. These guys are the center of entertainment. People sit there millions millions of dollars made millions of people watch them of course they're entitled to their opinions and they're they should speak out they should absolutely speak out i mean jesus how many people you know family time have they you know given us memories sitting by the tv watching them play like they are the biggest source of entertainment in the world and as an ex-coach a couple phrases that we always would say about a kid that was having some trouble like oh man their family life is rough, or, oh, man, they have a lot going against them. And I don't say anything about Draymond's home life. I don't know anything about it. I'm just kind of telling you my perspective on athletes speaking out like this. So when these athletes grow up and they do something good, whether they came from a bad background or not, I sure as hell am not going to tell them to shut up. I'm going to tell them to keep doing and be role models and teach people how to speak out loud and, and so forth. And it's even better when it's somebody like LeBron James, who you know his background. It was rough. It was not good. So, yes, he's just being a role model and these kids can look up to him. But what do you think? I want to get, like, does he have a point? Is it very hypocritical for these teams to do this? Yeah, so I do agree. And it pains me to say and agree with anything that he that he states. But I've said this for a long time. It comes down to players' rights, right? Players' rights to essentially define their own destiny. Us in the workplace, if I'm not feeling good or I'm like, you know what, I'm not with this, like I have the opportunity to go and seek a new job or call in sick if I have that luxury. And that's my right as a employee. The employer, typically, when they make decisions to cut your hours or um, not let you come in or put you on some sort of unpaid leave, in our workplace and pretty much any other American, they are the bad guy. But we as Americans tend to want to see those players play. And so when they get in the way of our entertainment, we make them the bad guy, right? Um, the organizations are typically insulated because they're not going to play someone because they're injured. Okay, you know, they make the right decision. Oh, they're looking out for the players. Or we've already made the playoffs, i.e. Patrick Mahomes in week 17 doesn't get played and we're like oh okay no big deal we don't care we're gonna make the playoffs so there's there's kind of a there is a double standard i mean that's the best way to say it um and i can't disagree with anything unfortunately that he said so i don't i think it's an open cut open and shut case i mean he's using his platform to make a point and yeah that is his right and we're talking about it and we're listening and it's news and that makes it more relevant and therefore we should continue to talk about it it's yeah, I mean, he didn't even get in. It, he he did not even get into the breakdown or separation of white and black players either. Like he didn't even go there, and he could have. He's simply just talking about players' rights, and I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, and then it goes back to it's a full circle. These kids that are growing up with not much and they're having a rough time. Who are they going to listen to more? Are they going to listen to a LeBron James? Or are they going to listen to somebody on the news that's telling LeBron James to be quiet? No, they're going to listen to LeBron James. Exactly. And they should. So that's that's the easiest way to end that argument. It, like I said, it wasn't a lot of people, but they're the trolls on Facebook that put the comments. And it just, you know, I want to call them out. A lot of people see don't you. agree with you. Yes. Anyway, he got in trouble for his mouth later in the week when he basically got a technical foul at with nine seconds left. Charlotte was down by two. Uh, in, you know, classic Draymond fashion, gets two techs, the Hornets hit the two free throws. <laughs> lose the game. Lose the game on a buzzer beater. So, yeah, that was a week of Draymond where he did 
did good things, but then... But did he deserve, deserve the tech? Apparently he did, because even he said, my bad. Like, I deserved it. Steve Kerr called him out as soon as the game was over. He said he crossed the line. J.J. Reddick got ejected for rolling a ball to the ref in the wrong way. J.J. is a... He went to Duke. He's a douche. I mean, he's pretty... Pretty sure he's the most hated Duke player of all time. <laughs> I think he's probably I I one of the most anything. loved too. I don't have anything. I don't know. I didn't. I don't know. Do you not like JJ? Talking about. I'm. I'm joking. JJ's fine. He's fine. So, but he came out. Steve Kerr said he definitely crossed the line, and it was well deserved. And then Draymond owned up. So it's the little things. Draymond's grown on me, but it was it was in sports. It needed to be talked about. Don't make me like Draymond. Like I start like I like I'm a Texans fan now. So. Yeah, way to jump on the Titanic as it's sinking. Let's put a grade on these. <laughs> Let's put a grade on these noses. So, Kurt, I'm gonna go first on this. Smoke wagon, uncut, unfiltered, batch 37, bottled January 11th. Um, this is a post insurrection. Um, I'm gonna say this is a solid B plus, man. Mm. Yeah, B plus. Yeah, B plus on the on the nose. It may just be the uh, yeah. It may just be the Buffalo man talking to me, but yeah. What was your nose on this store pick single barrels from Chattanooga? Uh, it was a solid A. Really? It was a little proofy, if I remember right, but all of the good classic bourbon notes that I liked, and I liked the cola. 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 Leader of cola. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B plus. All right, um, it's in the neighborhood. It wasn't a C minus. Yes. so that's good. No, no, this is good. This is good proof. I wish the notes were. You got to have those deep notes for my A. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not for your D. Great. No, for my A, you got to get a deep note, uh, and they're there. They're the good ones are there, but uh, like if we're making a quick comparison, those noses on the the Eagle Rare. I mean, yeah. they those are classic. They lingered. These ones aren't as deep. It'll get a solid B+. Uh, let's move on. Third brand, buddy. All right. So before we get into the NFL QB carousel, let's talk about your boys real quick. Texas Tech added a new QB to the QB room. What's your thoughts? Yeah. So as I'm watching Tech on uh, basketball right now, pretty big game. They've got to get a win going to get some momentum before the tournament start. Big news on the football field. Uh, Tyler Shuck, apparently the biggest QB transfer of the offseason decides he's going to love it uh and it's i'm already seeing you know tweets and things like the savior of texas tech i'm gonna keep it skeptical my problem is you've got a qb room of like five dudes so somebody's leaving I had already got my hopes set on. I don't think Columbia was going to be the answer. I think he's a solid, you know, get the job done, just like any decent recruit's going to do in a Texas Tech offense. Um, but I didn't think he was going to be the dude. We got a big recruit, big time, four-star recruit, and a kid named Morton from Texas. Uh, and that's just some of them that I'll, you know, just for the sake of moving it forward, there's a full quarterback crew. So it's exciting, but at the same time, it's like, some of these dudes are going to leave, uh, and I hope he's the answer because apparently, you know, he lost out to another guy at Oregon, which is probably going to be a really damn good quarterback if that's the case. Uh, so I'm going to keep it realistic. He has three years of el- eligibility, so he can be a dude for a while. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's football news. It just kind of leaves me with a dilemma because I had already had my mindset on a certain, you know, couple of guys that I was like, all right, let's see what they got. Okay, no, we're not. Let's see what this guy got. But transfers have been beat out before, a.k.a. your boy Tate over at Miami. Transfers is all, uh, have also won national championships. That is true, too. A.k.a. Cam so, Newton, to our point earlier. We will uh, we will see what happens. But to uh, Kurt's point, NFL QB carousel. So much fun happening, and we're going to save the best for midway through. Haha, see what we did there. Wentz. Going to the Colts, what did he do, and why did he do it, and should he have done it, and should he fight harder? What he did is he got himself out of Philadelphia. Yep. Uh, who basically they threw him out of there. Good. He has already been told by one of his wide receivers, Nah, dog, 
you went getting this eleven jersey, which is means that he's he has no you know, respect Tom for Brady. Him. You just Tom Brady, you just throw your jersey at him. Exactly. Um, and you tell your kids, grandkids so that's that story. The start. <laughs> that's the start that he has. Uh, <laughs> that's how his legacy starting in Indianapolis. Basically, just saying, nope, you ain't getting this number eleven jersey. Uh, but golly, Wentz was such a. You know, I saw one of those segments where they were talking about he was the savior to Philadelphia not a long time ago. Uh, Pittman's a receiver, by the way, uh, for the Colts that won't give him his 11 jersey. Sorry, who? Carson Wentz. I'm sorry, Michael Pittman Jr. would uh, will not be giving him. Oh. He oh, says that he dude, told I him. I forgot he forgot all the Pro Bowls he has. My bad. Sorry. You're such a hater. <laughs> you know, just because you're not a big... He had a he had no, one touchdown last year, I'm, asshole. I'm just saying it, it it just speaks volumes when your four string wide receiver won't even give you his number. <laughs> um Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. There's no, no you, okay, so Carson Wentz is going there going like, like I don't get no respect. <laughs> okay, let's keep it on the field. Um <laughs> Does it make? Does he replace Philip Rivers and things are golden in Indianapolis? And they do as well as they did last year. Winston Rivers are a lot alike, in my opinion. Um, maybe why? He has fifteen kids. No, I was going to go for like they have the same kind of build. He has the ugliest throwing motion in the league. Yeah, they they both have the same kind of build. They have the same kind of mobility. The offense was successful. Philip Rivers, even though he's kind of an older version of Wentz. Um, that always go back to like glass ass wins. Like he's gonna get hurt, and so I think you really gotta like really make sure that your second string quarterback can pick up for at least three games a year and like lead you to at least one win. So I, I don't know. I've always had a hard time investing him. I had this conversation with C. Jacks. I, I bet him money and he wouldn't take it that Jalen Hurts would take over starting quarterback somewhere in the season, and he was like, but. Oh, but not if Wentz gets hurt. So that doesn't count, right? I'm like, no. Class S Wentz is going to get hurt. That's why I'm betting you the money right now. It's inevitable. And what happened? He got benched. So, yeah. Didn't even get hurt. I know. He so, just got benched. <laughs> so, keep, let's keep it simple. Upgrade, downgrade, not much difference in Indianapolis. Are you talking about from Rivers or from other options they had? Now that they got Wentz, do they get better or stay the same? From last year, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, they're still the same. I think long term, there may be a playoff team, especially in the in the division they're in. Burn. Um, yeah. I'm gonna say downgrade. <clears throat> Wentz is gonna have to show me something, you know, like a super boring. No, he's gonna have to show me just not the shit poor of a job that he did last year. I mean, Rivers had all those interceptions the year before he was traded. Uh. Wentz is going to really have to show me that he's turned it around, but hey, maybe it's one of those new new place, new face. Who knows? Uh, but I'm going to say they're going to go down. Even though you took a shot at the Texans, I didn't do anything. That was that was you being sensitive. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to play the Titans. McGlung mm-hmm. hits a three, and it's fifty nine fifty seven Texas Tech. Um, all right, who's next? You're going to have to fill me in on this next guy because I see him on the list and I can't tell you anything other than did he retire today or what happened? Well, no, I just threw Big Ben on there because I saw this headline. It's more like, you know, the Steelers basically are just waiting on Big Ben. Like, what is he going to do? He has, like, the future in their hands. And the longer he waits, the more fucked they get. So, But does he... I mean, does he really affect him? I, I think I think they're really hard pressed that if Ben would come back and say, "Hey, I'm gonna give you another two years to draft a quarterback right now," really looking at their their position within the draft and the the quarterback options they have, where they could go a different route and try to go for a blockbuster trade like Watson with some of the weapons they have to offer. Yeah, they're not going after. Yeah, not, Watson's not going to the Steelers, but. What about ooh? What about Derek Carr in a Steelers uniform? Ooh, that might be interesting. Well, so the, you're, you're just tying into my point here. The longer Ben sits there and waffles on his decision, the worse position they put him in. Because I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a Big Ben committed for another two years over Derek Carr. I'm gonna 
because I mm, I think no. I, I, no, I because I think the next two to three years of draft classes coming out probably got me something. Mason Rudolph's not your guy. We all know that. So I don't know. That's my my uh, my take there. What about you? Got anything to add? Yeah. Well, when I say like, does it really? I mean, if there's a year where if Ben just drops out and says screw you guys. There's there's dudes. There's going to be dudes that they can go after. Sure. And they can... But that's what I'm saying. The sooner he tells me, hey, guys, I'm not coming back, the sooner I can get on the fucking chopping block and go and figure out next year. The longer he waits, the more options get absorbed or, or bought up. And now I'm fucking well, left with Mason Rudolph for a year. But once again, I think there's going to be options for a while this year. Maybe. And even if so... You don't know that, I mean, though. That's a heavy bet, man. Can, you could go into training camp and the Jets are like, we're going to suck anyway. Give me a pretty good package for Sam Darnold. Sure, why not? Sure, but that but you lose leverage at that point. It's Sam fucking Darnold. But you lose leverage. Right now, if I'm the Jets with the with the Steelers, the Steelers say, well, Ben might be coming back. Like, you don't know. Like, I have more leverage right now to make the damn deal. But if I know Ben's not coming back, we're in training camp, I'm fucked. My balls are against the wall because I'm not putting my entire... Next two to three years of like Steelers football. But are you really? I mean, I mean? I'm, I'm making my case. So I'm going to say yes. Um, moving on. I think we're talking about two different points here. Like I'm, I'm a lot more interested in like what's going on. Like Drew Brees, is he going to retire? Because if you're the I Saints, he already said he retired. Apparently not. Uh, I mean, if he is, he's he's going about it in a not exactly confirming way. Um, but I mean, well, I, uh, maybe I'm much more interested because if you're the because if you're the Saints, if Drew Brees retires, you're like, oh shit! All right, Jameis, so let's go out there and uh, let's see what we've got to do. Let's see where I want to go is just a little bit of direction. I I texted you in kind of a uh, hungover, drunken stupor um, on Sunday from a tweet. That I woke oh, the up Barry to, McCockiner? yeah, Barry McCockiner, and I saw that Watson had been traded to the Bears for Trubisky and like two second round picks. And I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" And you're like, and "Did you read his name?" And I was like, "Yeah, I did, and I get it now." Well, the fight, <laughs> like as soon as you said, "What the fuck, bitch, Mitch," and I was like. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't that tweet you were talking about. Dude, I was, I was up until like, 3 o'clock that night. <laughs> I'm going to say something happened. Maybe they gave Mitch Trubisky an extension or something. Um, but no, then you sent me the tweet that I had seen two days before, and I was like, the dude's name is Barry McCockiner. Well, dude, That's, I got the tw- I got the Twitter push. Like, once my, why I need you to manage the Twitter account, I got that Twitter push at, like, I woke up at 10 o'clock, and I was like, what the fuck is this shit from 7 o'clock that morning? I guess it got some traction. It popped up as an, uh, an alert. But anyway, that didn't happen. But it's a good segue to Watson. What the fuck's Watson, going on? Which We're going to keep talking about this until it happens, man. We're going to have an emergency that's meeting. That's what I told you. I didn't want to talk about it, but there, there's all these scenarios that keep popping up that make it worth talking about. As of course, I it's sip fun to talk this, about. And this Chattanooga whiskey is getting better and better with every sip. It's good stuff, man. I, I like it. Mm. The grade's going to be a little bit better than the nose. I, I got a feeling. Um, so I sent, I sent you the package possibility that the Panthers are apparently clearing all this space. They've released a couple players. Some, some um, guy's girlfriends are sending them tweets. About <laughs> yes, there was a, a, a tweet going around that a girlfriend texted her boyfriend like, Oh, I think the Panthers are clearing cap space. They let some players go for Watson. And then he tweets out, we're like, getting Watson. <laughs> he was like, you know, this is a keeper. Marry her for sure. So that was like, that's McCaffrey, two first round draft picks, two second round draft picks or something like that. That's a good deal. That's a great deal. It makes me raise an eyebrow and I do get excited. Does it I'll make you raise more than an eyebrow? <sighs> A little bit, but he would have to get a new trainer, <laughs> and he would have to change that shitty diet that apparently isn't working for him because he's made of glass. Uh, <laughs> it's just his knee, just his knee. <laughs> and from and from what I've heard, so you hear the Dolphins, you hear the Jets, now you're hearing the Panthers, and I'm going to rank it 
if I'm ranking those three, I'm going Dolphins, Jets, Panthers still. I thought I'll you tell said you why. New York. My bad. I did. Oh. Dolphins, Jets, Panthers. You think those are the realistic? No. I'm giving you my rankings as mm. like how do I like these these deals that I've heard. So you want Tua over McCaffrey? I do. Really? Because you're getting so you take McCaffrey, you're getting a running back, and you're getting like the number eight pick. So you get McCaffrey, and you're yeah. hoping to he's, maybe he's take healthy. Justin Fields or Wilson from BYU. Definitely not Bond. Are they going to be there? Mm. Are they going to be there at eight? Maybe. And Do you really want Justin running Fields? Back? I mean, something. Something to put some tickets out there. Um, something for all the season ticket holders that are saying, fuck you. Um and it's a running back. And the jokes were already like, oh, the Texans wouldn't trade an all-star for a running back. Ha, 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 David Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins. So you're talking Christian McCaffrey, a big injury, you're risking it. Two, it can be quarterback. You get like the number three pick still for sure to get something to build upon. I like that one. If it's going to happen, I like that one. The Jets... You get a def- couple defensive players. That defense needs everything it can get, and you're getting the number three pick, which you can use. Fields is going to be there. Wilson's going to be there. You get a young quarterback. You get some defensive. So those are why I like those picks over than this Chris- Christian-, Christian McCaffrey. But I sent you the-, the post I saw. Already starting drama. Apparently, Teddy Bridgewater has canceled everything Panthers wise on his social media. Yeah, I mean that they kinda that's a nail in the coffin right there, dude. Like you've got a few more to give, but I there's too and much evidence. There's too much evidence. Deshaun just... Watson <laughs> You know Friday where you're messing with my emotions, man? Mm-hmm. Deshaun's doing that to everybody. Is he though? Like life. he doesn't he doesn't owe us anything, right? I mean he he's sitting there, he's doing what We'd be sitting here bitching up and down if he was making any sort of statement or going up and or leading us on one way or another. I think he's doing the right thing, but just being quiet. Like let it happen, let it happen, and let just let it ride. Because we're not going to be able to make this. We're not going to be able to make this a moment in history where he said something dumb or tweeted something stupid or made a dumb statement. We're going to let it ride. Well, here's the thing, which. Like, I, you guys are getting the emotions of Kurt as this whole situation's unfolding. Expect nothing for less. For his sake, for his sake, I think he needs to say something more because ignoring the Texans' phone calls is just going to give You don't them know that the, he's ignoring the, the Texans' phone calls. That's what everybody's reporting. Okay, but I and mean. he hasn't been traded yet. Well. So. What I'm saying is for the sake of Deshaun, if he wants to get out, he tells the Texans, I want to get out. He which did. obviously Okay, well, apparently he's not doing it enough. <laughs> I should only have to tell you once. If I want out of a bad relationship, I should not have to continue to break up with you. One so time. If you, if, if you were to tell me that Deshaun comes out, makes it public that he's talked to the Texans he wants out. He already did. When? Through via sources, it doesn't. This okay, is okay. Okay, right. so you you just answered my question through sources. Okay, Ian Rappaport reports. Adam Schefter those, reports. That is that is the Bible right there. All right, those are the those are the prophets writing the Bible. Okay. But these are the same people that are reporting that he hasn't talked to them. Right, let's that just, he's ignoring their let, calls. I mean, let's just put it this way, dude. I mean, you and I live by a mantra for a long time, right? And we've all screwed up. Just. Don't put your dick in crazy. And Deshaun got in with crazy, and just get out of that shit. Just, just put him on red and leave, move on. You're still letting me make like I'm. I'm trying to make a point where Deshaun needs to do this for Deshaun. Like he needs to say. Apparently, he needs to tell the Texans, they're going to trade him. You more. They're going to trade him. Apparently not. Apparently, they're as stubborn. Dude, as we just we just laid out all the groundwork where he's going to fucking Carolina. To be continued. I mean, I I don't think you're. <laughs> I'm saying that if. He can make this easier on himself, which you're right. He doesn't have to. But I think for both parties, 
it would be more better to be more public about like, hey, I want to get out. And then I like I think that Texans need a big slap in the face. Like he's not fucking coming back, or maybe I do. I don't know. I mean, I think you need to slap in the face, but yeah, sure. Um, Fuck you. What do you want to talk about, JJ? For I mean, I love JJ. How could you not? I love the little like. I love how some dude called him out about like, if you, are you gonna like tell us where you're fucking going? He's like, I take an hour to fucking order Uber Eats. You think it's it's gonna take me a little while to figure out where I'm going? <laughs> DoorDash, <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> but even his even his goodbye was so beautiful. It was beautiful. It was great. Video. And he's out there like, oh, uh, TJ Watts, or, TJ Watts, a real man, shovel in his front driveway, and people are like, oh, does that mean he's going to the Steelers? Like, is TJ trying to bring? Him? Of course he's trying to. Of course TJ's like, dude, come play with me. Like, it'll be back when the day when all of us were playing the same high school team. That'd be fucking awesome. I don't, <sighs> I don't want him to go to Pittsburgh. I don't want to go to Pittsburgh either, but it'd be kind of cool to see three Watt brothers on the same field at the same time. whoop dee doo <laughs> Like, if this was the senior night in high school basketball game, cool. This is the NFL. How, and he has how like, fucking proud would you be if all three of your last name was on three jerseys on a professional football team on the field at the same time? Do you know how proud their dad would be? You know, you know how proud, proud he would is. be? Yeah, I would be more proud if my name was on the back of a Super Bowl championship t-shirt. Uh... And JJ ain't getting that if he goes to Pittsburgh. That's fair. I, I did hear some rumors about like his um, fiance wife, his wife, is posting something about like the Windy City and like there's. But why would he go to Chicago? Why? That, so he could be Brian Urlacher and never get a ring and be the best defensive player on the team in ten years. Uh, Urlacher didn't get a ring, did he? No, no. He played in the Super Bowl. They lost to yeah Peyton Manning and the Colts. Um, that was the Prince halftime spectacle. Wonderful. Um, you know, I, I, where do I want him to go? Sign him up at Tampa Bay. Fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> he has an Round actual two. chance. Fight. Kansas City. Could you imagine like, him and Ndamukong you know, Sue on the line at the same time? With, I mean, with JPP? <laughs> it's real simple. I want to win a ring. I'll uh, probably go to Mike Evans like, teams. I'll give you half my salary. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Um... Yeah, I hope it's not Pittsburgh. I hope he ends up somewhere better. But, yeah, J.J.'s gone. He did it gracefully. I, that is now in no way saying that Deshaun is not doing what he's doing gracefully. Don't put words in my mouth. They're different people. They have different communication um, styles. We talked about this. All right, yes. what do you get on the, the pallet, dude? More of the same on the nose. Mm, yep. But this one at 119 kicks like a 135. Yeah, no, it's proofy. Lie. She's a proofy gal. I wrote that down. Yes, and it comes off very proofy. More of the same on the nose. The coal is there. Maple syrup, dark caramel, molasses, those kind of flavors. I'm going to throw a word at you when you're done and see if you get that. Well, tell me what you're getting out. So, f- so for funk at the end of it. So for that one, I got butterscotch. No, I'm getting more of the darker syrups. Okay. But there's a little funk at the end that I don't know. I, I currently like the funk. What did you get? What else did you get on your your palate for this one? Um, so I said a proofy front palate. Uh, there's a bitterness to it. Um, cinnamon, oak, banana, and then butterscotch. Oak, definitely. Cinnamon, eh. I don't know. I, I It's getting better as I sip on it, like I said, but... Dude, this is going to be a good game, man. We got 17.3 left. 63-65. Ball's inbounded. McGlung has it. That's what I thought. He's going to put up the good three. good 10 seconds behind you. And he whiffs that one real badly. Oh. Oh. Dirty. McGlung whiffed the three bad. Kicks it out. Yep. Look at this. Airballs the three. Kicks out... T- that was a hell of a rebound. That is a clutch ass rebound. Better pass. Uh, I would 65 65. I don't know. That was a good rebound. But yeah, that was a dude trapped. 
throw it down. Get your low man. Well, better drop it, not just chunking that three and getting it down to the guaranteed points. Yeah. Agreed. Look at that. Okay. Um, before I give my grade, what are you getting on the pallet of that smoke wagon? Um, vanilla is very prevalent. Cinnamon bite. She's sweet. Not very proofy. I mean, we're talking about a uh, 57.6, so that's 115.2 proof. Um, it's it's solid, man. For 115 proof, like this is not something to be angry at. I've already had a couple of these, so a little bitterness in the back end when you really try. But all in all, I mean, sweet vanilla, dill, a little bit of oak, slight cinnamon. Not as complex on the palate as it is on the uh, nose as we watch into the game. No, you did not foul him. No, it's going to be. Oh, this jump ball. Thank God. Uh, no, it's out of bounds. Fuck. 65-65, Oklahoma State got the ball under their basket after a really long pass that basically took both players out of bounds. They're giving it to Oklahoma. Play good defense. Oh, okay. Overtime. Cool. Um, keep rolling. I'll grade this first for the palette. It's going to get a B plus. There's just this aftertaste. It's the deep syrup colors, the deep caramel but it has that little bit of after you take after you take the NyQuil, the feeling on the tongue. That's there, so that's the that's the little part that knocks it from the the A minus to B plus. Still very solid. I I'm gonna say I enjoyed the cast strength, the one eleven, uh, a little bit more, which is ironic because I say my sweet spot is one fifteen, and both are four off. I had the one eleven. This is one nineteen. I'm gonna give the nod because I've I, I've had smoother for a higher proof. This is really got some sting. It's a single barrel too. Remember only that. knock on it. Yes, only knock on it. Still enjoy it. Still loving what Chattanooga's doing because the, the nose on this is very good. Um, the palate has some really good flavors. It's just the ending that gives it that little knock. If I'm critiquing it, what about you? What do you got on that grade? So what I gave that grade was a B plus as well. So we're right in line. Um, nice. On the smoke wagon, I'm going to give it a B. There's nothing I don't like about this. But there's nothing that's like, oh my god, this is the best shit since sliced bread. Um, it is a solid B. Nice. So, yeah, this is a long episode. Uh, our plan was to take a little week break uh, after the football season. Mother Nature said, yeah, I'll make that easy for you. And kind of as we said, gave us a hell of a week. So we were excited to get behind the mic. So we're, we're going in a fourth dram. For sure. We won't keep it too long, but that was kind of just a little backstory. We had planned on taking a week, and we were kind of forced to take an off week. Uh, took a break, didn't record last weekend. Well, and we'll probably and, move yeah. to like through the off season, maybe a one and a half, two week release. So just expect that from us. Um, as, as hot shit hits the presses, we'll, we'll hit the mic a little sooner. Um, but uh, Kurt and I are, are big football guys, and uh, that'll be our weekly update um, during football season. As we, yes, as we're watching the college basketball game going into overtime. Exactly. Duke is on a winning streak. We may have to talk a little, little bit about Duke in the future here uh, after the one Dukies. of their big players left. I expect us when we're doing like March Madness to be talking more regularly. So on this, and we'll make the tasting fun because we will be doing a March Madness type bracket stuff we've tasted, new stuff. Definitely not going to be 64, but we will definitely figure it out. I'm going to let you open up fourth dram because you're hitting the whiskey news. You're the nerd. Lay it on us. I'm the nerd, but you have a better palate. So, um, yeah, so whiskey news. We always want to obviously talk about sports and whiskey. A um, couple things to throw at you. I'll lay out the topic. 
Kurt will give him his reactions, and I'll double back if there's anything I need to counter. Um, Japanese whiskey gets a formal definition. This is kind of a big thing uh, recently. I think there's a couple articles released. Um, er, I'm sorry, late last week, early this week. Um, there, there's a few gen, a Japanese whiskey. There's Nika. There's a Suntory. There, there's a few others out there I'm not going to name because I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but now there is a coalition essentially being put together where they're saying, we're going to define what this is, much like a bottle and bond, but it's by a federal law, um, or what bourbon technically is, what Texas whiskey te- technically is. Um, and without further ado, I'll just lay those out here. There are five points that have been outlined for what Japanese, Japanese whiskey must be. They must be made with grain including malted barley. So the malt is where you get your alcohol, right? Um, It must be, I'm not going to attempt to say this word of malted and mashed, fermented, distilled, and matured in Japan. So it has to be in Japan for at least three years in wooden, not necessarily oak, casks of 700 liters or smaller. It also must be bottled in Japan at a minimum of 40 ABV, so it's 80 proof, and cannot exceed 95% ABV. So that is going to be, what, 110? No, wait. Shit. 190 proof. Yeah. So it cannot exceed 190 proof. So apparently we we could technically see some Japanese Everclear. That would be some wild shit. Um, And then there's something about coloring. Coloring can be caramel, but whatever. Um, Kurt, do you care? I mean, did I just waste my time bringing this up? (sighs) <sighs> no, it's not wasting your time because the more you know, the better. Uh, Japanese whiskey. Have you had Nika coffee? It's so good. I've no, I've I've planned on trying. Nika got what was it? One of their bottles got Advocate of the Year mm-hmm. uh, a Can't couple years ago. Never is. got, never got my hands on it. Definitely a road I've never gone down. Uh, I think I've been given a bottle of um, Satori. That's a pretty typical. It's your thirty-five dollar entry. Square, square bottle. Kiki biki. Yeah, yeah. Centauri. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been, I've, I've been given a bottle of Centauri, um, but I'm not gonna act like I know much more than that. It's kind of scotch-like to me. It, it's very scotch-like. F- you know, you nailed the it. The few that I've had, very floral, um, very, very light, um, typically in color. Um, I, I, I but, like that assessment. But shit, since I'm going back down the Texas road, I would be definitely willing to open up my uh, knowledge and palate for some Japanese whiskey and see what see what the fuss is about. And I think what you're going to see with Kurt and I when we talk about like whiskey, like him and I are going to definitely drive toward the typical bourbons, uh, maybe some of your Texas whiskeys as well. We're definitely homers on that end. Um, we're also going to want to explore maybe the western states, although New Riff is another one I'll talk about here in a second, which is actually uh, from um, Kentucky as well, that we're interested in. <clears throat> the, the the Japanese and the Scotch and the uh, Irish whiskeys are definitely good. It's just really hard for us to go spend our money on that when we know what we like. Um, I think you'll probably see me pick up, pick up Nika by the barrel if I can. Um more than anything else. So I'm, I'm, I'll summarize it with this. I'm happy that we have a Japanese whiskey definition. All right. The next one we have is Double Eagle Very Rare 2021. It's the third release. There's only 199 bottles done. We've talked about this bottle in the past. 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah. 50 bucks right about there. Um, should be able to find it on every shelf. 50 bucks. Um, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, man. I mean, MSRP is a little bit, uh, just multiply that by 100, a 2,000. Ah, gotcha. And gotcha. Uh, the gotcha. secondary gotcha. is anywhere, we've seen the first two releases, uh, 15,000 to uh, $35,000. Um, I did take some... You li- know, half seas? Yeah, dude. Oh, I did take a look and uh, actually look up what a pour of this would be at uh, Bar 1919, which actually has it on the shelf. I think it's their second release. Um, they're selling it for about $500 a pour. Why not? What are your, I mean, it. honestly, what it. are your thoughts? Like, is this something like, we both love Eagle Rare. We just reviewed it. It's an A. The 20-year palette, I don't, there's not that many reviews out there. It comes to a cool fucking box. I don't really want the bottle more than anything. It's a decanter. 
if we're at 1919 and you're coming in for a special no. occasion, no, not doing it. No, or, I'd rather have five pappies. I'd rather have five. Um, a lot of things. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not splitting. I'm not splitting two fifty uh, for a half point a sip five ounce. Eagle, or, nope. I'm gonna pay a pretty good penny for the seventeen year. Um, try that. Absolutely. Was probably around hundred dollars a pour. I'll do that. All right. So in comparison, you know, we talk about five hundred dollars a pour. If you go to the same place and get an Eagle Rare ten pour, that's seven bucks. So I mean. Do what you will. I don't. I'm, I'm sure it's phenomenal, but but I'm, last time I checked, you, you ten made a, seven times two is not five hundred. So, <laughs> um, like you said, you can pull out five hundred dollars. You can put it on a table, and you can try several very very good things, especially at that establishment. Buy you can several try. several good bottles for five hundred dollars. Yes. So no, I would not do that. the The bottle is amazing. I would maybe pay like fifty bucks for an empty decanter. I would, uh, I would pay two fifty for an empty decanter. I think it's that legit. No. It has a, no, dude, it has a glass. It has a glass blown eagle on the inside of it. You, so you would blow an eagle for two hundred and fifty dollars? Dude, I blow an eagle for less. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. What else we got? So whiskey world. a couple things we talked about new riff. You've heard me talk about it. We got new riff. Um, my source has it incoming to specs for the next couple months. Um, that's a black bottle. You're going to see with green for the rye or orange for the bourbon. Um, big thing I've been really trying to get my hands on. Um, you can obviously special order it anywhere you are. But if you're in Texas, expect it at your local specs um, within the next couple months. I'm excited about it. Um, I did read that they have a... Um, 100% barrel proof rye so it's a 95.5 rye so 95% malted rye um, uh, yeah barrel proof rye so I'm excited about that one um, Kurt any any thought on that man I'm excited to try a new rift you've sold it the bottle's cool uh, I've seen it come up a lot in a lot of um, you know whiskey blogs and, and the whiskey world out there I, I do want to try it I don't know if I'll be fortunate enough to try the fancy smancy ones. I may stay, start with their basic, uh, which you know more than me. So that would be their what? That would be their. I'm pretty sure they have a small batch, um, small batch bourbon. My understanding of their price point should be anywhere from the forty-five to ninety dollars, depending on what you're looking at. I don't know how readily available it'll be either. I mean, that's going to be the one of those weird ones. Um, Smoke yeah. wagon get the shelves and went by gangbusters. Now you can find it more often. So. Yeah. Don't overpay. Uh, Don't secondary market that bitch. Um, there will be more. Yeah. So I would I would definitely try it for MSRP. But until I taste it, that's about all I got on that. All right. Fair enough. That's about all I got to say about that. Jenna. So the last one is I'm really bringing this up because of our uh, whiskey club. I've seen a couple stories on this. Like, man, you've got some Israeli whiskeys now. A guy in our whiskey club threw up a uh, Mexico. Whiskey said it smelled a lot like tequila. It didn't taste like it at all. Um, what are your thoughts, man? Like, are we gonna are we gonna keep going? Just everybody they're gonna have a Pakistani whiskey and like a, you know, a I don't know, a Russian whiskey. Like, is that gonna keep where we're going with this industry right now? What do they say? Jump on the pot while it's hot. A bandwagon, something like that. Yeah, sure. Smoke pot all, every day. Whatever. Smoke <laughs> weed every day. It's the thing, man. Whiskey oh, stops speaking selling. of New Jersey legalized recreational weed, we should go visit Keith. Yeah, Keith would totally be down to do all that. Uh, and that's sarcasm. He said um, sarcastically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith would be like, you want to come see me to smoke pot? Uh, no. Uh, it's the thing, man. Everyone's trying to jump on it while it's hot. Everyone's trying to try new things. I mean, just going down the Chattanooga whiskey, they have a shitload of their experimental stuff. That's I was fun. telling you, apricot brandy batch. That sounds horrible. You know, I don't want to. Uh, oh, you know, one of several. So everyone's trying to jump on it. It just kind of goes. Are you willing until you hear more about it? If I'm gonna. St- I'm going to live in Kentucky until I hear more about it and venture out. I want my tequila from Mexico. I don't want it from anywhere else. I might give you like Southern Arizona, New Mexico, California, 
But that's it. I don't want my tequila from anywhere else. Like, I don't want my whiskey from outside, like, prime wheat-growing areas. Like, I, I do not want my whiskey from Mexico. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Um, and I don't want my vodka from anywhere but potatoes. So, if you can grow potatoes, do that. Tech just lost an OT. Shut the fuck up. You ruined it for me. Okay. It's, it's a... Uh, <sighs> Big 12's rough, man. Big 12's real rough. Oklahoma State wasn't even ranked, and they have a much better record than Tech. Refs just raw-dogging Tech on this one. They did. It was pretty rough. I stayed calm. Um, I mean, that's what what you're going to get. All right, so I I think that's Uh, a good way to to end out our sad episode. Let's go to uh, rating. What's in your glass? I gave the nose a B plus. I gave the palate a B plus. I'm going to give it an overall B+. Plus. Pretty simple. Delicious. Good. Um, wasn't disappointed. I was excited to try it. And there was some very, very good things. Yeah. That's what I got. B+. Plus. Good stuff. Try it. it was, how was the, what was the price point? 45 if I remember right. Perfect. That's fine. Definitely worth it. Grab it. See if you like it. Compare it to the cast drink, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, what about you on that smoke wagon? Um, so what I gave the overall on that Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Chattanooga 119 barrel proof single barrel was an A minus. Um, so I think Kurt and I are in the same ballpark with that one. Uh, smoke wagon. B plus. Maybe hitting on an A minus. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I think when you take the whole experience end to end, and you, there's so many other factors that go into this. Like you talk about overall, like price point, fifty bucks. Story, A plus. Bottle, fucking A plus plus. Right, it's a beautiful fucking bottle. And then you take into the whiskey itself. Like the fact that they're still sourcing and they're doing such a good job mixing is just amazing. I can't wait till they start distilling their own stuff. I don't know if that is on Aaron's roadmap, and Aaron uh, Chepnik is my understanding how to say it, uh, the Smoke Wagon co-owner and uh, distiller you see on Instagram. I don't know if that's on his roadmap, but it should be. I, I think that the dude's got a nose and can mix like hell, and you're talking about some small batch, maybe even single barrel stuff that'd be amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a little, you know, you can go both ways. Own stuff, if it's broke, don't fix it, but... Definitely excited. All right. So we're going to get over that goal line. Uh, We definitely talked about a lot. That was our first episode after the storm, the Texas blizzard we had. I was excited to be back behind the mic. Uh, There was a lot going on. We talked about the quarterback carousel. We talked about Draymond Green. We we talked about the fight in the bathroom. We talked about Cam Newton. Uh, So we had a good time. Interact with us. You cannot stress that. Interact with us. We want to interact with you. We want to shout you out on the show. Uh, So, yeah, hop on there. We're going to get better. We're going to start to take our social media to the next level. We have a website. Dick will tell you all about that right now. Go for it, Dick. Sure. Website, fourthramandgold.com. Uh, Kurt already hit on the Instagram. Uh, this fourth dram, 4-T-H-C-R-A-M. We do have a strong Twitter game that's about to be rolled out. Kurt's going to take the lead on that. Uh, you are going to love his quips, anecdotes, and bullshit. Um, and also, like, you know, just hit us up on the email, man, fourthramandgold at gmail.com. Like, we're always here for you. We got you. Um, you're one of us. If you're listening to this, you, you know who you are. You're one of us. Um, and, and man, just like fucking tell your friends about us, man. Like we got the you know podcast apps. We got Apple Podcasts, Audible, Castbox, Podcast Addict, Spotify, etc. Rank, review us. Tell us what the fuck you think. Like you're not gonna hurt our feelings. I, I've seen Kurt. He's harder than you think. And uh, yeah, Kurt, you want to go ahead and lay us out with the uh, quote of the quote of the episode? I don't know if I'm harder than you think. I'm probably just as hard as you think I am. Uh, hey. Yeah. We both watch Get Hard, and I think you're harder. <laughs> Bring it. Um, yeah. So, we talked about Tech. I saw them lost tonight. My heart's broken. They've got a new quarterback. Any way I could work in the Pirate, I've got to work in a quote from the Mike Leach. Ask Pirate. From his, 
book, Swing Your Sword, that if you haven't read it, check it out. You're such a fucking hater. Uh, I didn't want to look back on my life and regret never having tried coaching, so I went for it. Am I a hater? You can or am I plug in, <laughs> shut up. You can literally plug in anything where he says coaching and go for it. That's a good way to live your life. And if you end up like Mike Leach, why the hell not? Just be a little bit stronger on your uh, ideas of co- of fighting and brawling after. Well, and living in Starkville, Mississippi. So, I mean. Oof, shots fired. Four grammars. Clang, 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 clang. To the next snap and the next dram. Drink on, drammers. Thank you.